from KSL Broadcast House. This is Sunday Edition with the Deseret News and KSL. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Edition. I'm Dave McCann. It is Super Bowl Sunday, so let's talk politics. A pair of Deseret News political columnists are with me this morning, LeVar Webb and Frank Pignanelli. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. I'm going to get your predictions for the game here coming up in just a couple of minutes. But let's start with the world that the two of you are living in, the political world, which is very different from the past few years that we've had. How so? It, it, like him or not, Donald Trump has changed uh, politics. I teach a campaign management class at the university every year. I had to throw away all the syllabi, syllabi and all the books and everything because he has changed how politicians interact with people. He has changed how messaging is conducted. So it isn't just him, but it's also social media. For, you now have politicians who are running who are not even advertising on television. They're right. doing everything through social media. That's the new trend. Like it or not, that's where it's going, and that's what we have to respond to, not just in the elections, but also how public policy is developed on a national and state level. LeVar, what's the buzz in your world? Well, we haven't seen anything like this, the Trump phenomenon in my lifetime, and I'm pretty old. So, uh, so it, really, it really has been fascinating and will continue to be fascinating. I don't think we'll really know what kind of a president he is and how successful he is for another six months at least, but he certainly is uh, turning Washington upside down. And in my opinion, that's good in many ways. I wish he wouldn't go off on so many sidetracks on things that are completely unnecessary, but I like the fact that he is uh, kind of blowing up Washington. The hot topic is with, uh, among them, I guess, among the hot topics, the refugee situation earlier this week. Uh, the last of the refugees arrived in Utah that were allowed to before this four-month uh, uh, delay. Uh, you're not for it, right? I am not. I believe this is just a sloppy attempt to fulfill his campaign promise to have the Muslim ban. And it really is targeted at one religion. Now, granted, it's, it's for seven countries, but we all know what it's for there. And we've had a lot of problems on the humane situation, but also you have interpreters that have helped us in Iraq. They're, you know, they're having problems getting in, and also it's sending the wrong signal to those really highly skilled, trained individuals. It's the wrong approach. I believe in vetting everyone who comes in. You just don't target a specific faith. What do you think, Lamar? Well, I didn't particularly like the executive orders, uh, but I don't think you can say that it's racist or bigoted. It was targeted at nations, at seven nations where terrorists have come from, not Muslims. There are many, many Muslim countries that are not affected at all by the ban, and of course it is temporary. The, the thing that I don't like about it particularly is, is the way it was rolled out. You know, when you make a big public policy decision or announcement, the, the way you make it and the people you talk to and the coalitions you build are just as important as the decision itself. And I thought it was very amateurish the way they rolled this out. This, uh, I will say this. This is an important thing. Right. In our column this morning, I utilized my well-trained Catholic guilt to pose upon my Mormon friends to oppose this. Yeah, so and I don't, I don't think you can compare this to bigotry <laughs> against <that> early Mormons. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is that you can com really compare it to bigotry against early Mormons right. because that was targeted against religion, and I don't think this there, was. This is too. This well, is targeted it's targeted towards. It's, it's the targeted same thing. Against, it's the it's same thing. It's targeted thing. against nations. They just don't have someone as good as Brigham Young come to, to help them out. This whole immigration policy, including the wall uh, with Mexico and the U.S., um, one thing that, that Donald Trump gets a little credit for is doing something where the immigration issue has been kicked down the street by about every president in my lifetime. Here comes a non-politician that says, I promise to do some things and I'm going to execute that. And the media and a lot of folks just don't quite know how to handle that. It's like, one, when something's being done, whether you like it or not, and two, the way he's doing it is unlike what we've seen before. So. So we're, e we're either up uh, in arms or, or we're all for it. And, that's, and actually, we actually touch upon this in our column, too, because you're right. Somebody's doing something. And for those of us who have been frustrated with Washington, but it's dangerous because you're, what you're seeing... And it's happens, always dangerous when somebody does something. You know, I know, well, and Obama, he had no problem issuing a bunch of executive orders. And now you've got uh, Trump doing the same thing. It's what's happening. This perception is that the only way you can get things done in Washington is by executive order and not that other building at the end of the National Mall, the Congress. And while that may be invigorating to Phil, that's not democracy. Well, under Democrat or Republican president. I do, am concerned about the number of executive orders. We do have uh, Republican control of Washington now. Right. And obviously, 
usually Congress moves slower than the president issuing executive orders, but we will know in six or eight months just how effective this president is with the Republican Congress. Talk public lands for a moment, Bears Ears, is I don't think most people understand it or know where it actually is, but it comes up in, in a lot of our news stories and certainly up on Capitol Hill. But the fact that Utah voted for Donald Trump, does that mean Donald Trump is going to pull back on that Bears Ears monument. Will he throw Utah a bone? I, I think there's a reasonable chance of that. Yeah. I think that he, he may not rescind it entirely, but he may reduce the size and perhaps also the size of the Grand Staircase National Monument. I, I personally, I would like to see the uh, Rob Bishop and Jason Chaffetz, the uh, congressmen, their public lands initiative go forward. I think a lot more land would actually be protected environmentally through that process than just designating a, a monument. Education, when the dust settles with this legislature, are my taxes going up? No, they're not going up. Uh, there is a concern, there is a fear by a lot of lawmakers about this Our Schools Now initiative petition drive that would have Utahns vote on whether to increase income taxes. And I think what it is, it is driving perhaps, you know, your taxes may go up in your internet purchases right. at some point in time after everything's settled, but they are look, the lawmakers are looking for other sources of revenue to help bolster the education funding. So there will be an increase in education funding. They may find some places that they haven't tried before. They've got to find some money. Yeah, the, right. danger, the danger is that it will just be piecemeal and not enough to really make any difference. I mean, ba essentially, we've just kind of kept up with growth. We haven't put really a lot of new money in. You know, we, Utah's number one in so many areas. Why aren't we number one in education? We have more uh, school children percentage-wise than any city in the country. Is it because our children are dumber? Is it because our teachers are, are less proficient? Is it because our parents care less? No, the reason is we our resources are so slim. I don't think we can get to number one in education which we need to do to prepare our children for the jobs of the future when we're spending the least per student in the whole country. So we do need a big funding increase for education. Let's look into the crystal ball for a minute. Two years from now and then four years from now, Donald Trump will be what kind of president? How will Utah see President Trump? Yes. <laughs> Assuming we're not in a major depression or a war. <laughs> That's a lot of assumptions. <laughs> you know, he will, he will be a change president that uh, shook up Washington, which has been lethargic and do, do, do nothing for, for many, many years. And so I think there's a, there's a chance some pretty exciting things could happen. Right? You have to feel bad for Utahns. We really didn't want him. You know, Republicans, especially Democrats, and, but Republicans felt like, okay, we'll do it. Uh, I think he'll be viewed as maybe, you know, he's able to shake up Washington, but, it, but it, it, it's not how we do things in Utah. And I think what will happen is Utahns will feel like the Utah way of how we govern, how we manage, is still a superior system to anything that Donald Trump had. All right, Frank LeVar, you can read the, their words of wisdom in the Desert News this morning on the refugee policy. Thank you for being here and sharing your opinions. Thank you. Good to have you here.